Hi, I'm Eric from Rocky Mountain ATV MC.com, and today we're going to go over some tips and tricks on how to plow your snow. So today we're outside. It's a beautiful day. Um, it's it's it snowed the last couple days. We don't have a ton of snow here today, but it's enough that it's going to make it so we can give you some tips and tricks on how to plow snow. You know, there's a ton of variables uh, when you're plowing snow. You got to remember that the the depth, uh, how wet the snow is, uh, where you're plowing. You know, is where you're plowing. Do you have downhills, uphills? Uh, do you have enough room to maneuver the machine? Um, do you have enough room to put the snow? And and all these things are going to come together. And hopefully, I can maybe help a little bit with it and get you guys started on how to plow. Now, first off, I am not going to talk about safety at all. Uh, that's a big part of this, and that's something you guys need to work on on your own. There's uh, your plows come up with a bunch of uh, safety literature, your machine does, and then there's a lot of common sense that comes into this. You know, you've got a big piece of machinery that you're going pretty decent speeds with it, and you're hitting things that you can't really see underneath the snow. And so safety is a huge deal. Now, when we're talking about plowing, we have two pretty much areas. First is prep, and then you have the actual plowing, and we'll go through those. For the prep side of plowing, uh, it's very important. You know, first of all, you want to make sure your machine's prepped, and that's going to include putting the plow on for the season, going to make sure that uh, your, all your fluids are full, everything's lubed, you've got decent tires. Plowing puts a lot of load on these machines. You're going to be using them at their capacity to push these big, huge uh, piles of snow around. And so the best time to get everything together and get it rolling is not when it's freezing outside. You don't want to be right in the middle of the storm of the century running down to the hardware store because you dropped a bolt in the snow or something like that or you lost a boulder. So make sure your machine's ready to go beforehand. Next, you got to take care of the operator. You know, I'm not dressed ideally today. It's I would probably bundle up a little bit more if I was doing some actual plowing because I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be trying to rush things. So make sure you're, you're taking care of and you're comfortable. It's going to make it so you don't make bad safety decisions. You don't take shortcuts. Area prep. So in the fall, I'll normally roll around my house, make sure that my sprinklers are down lower than the sidewalk so that I'm not so when I push the snow off the driveway, off the sidewalk, I'm not taking the tops of the sprinklers off. Something else you can do if you just have a problem area is mark it. So it's the fall, the, the dirt's nice and soft. You can take a marker. I've seen them at the hardware stores. They have a reflector on. People use them to uh, uh, mark their driveways. Uh, you can also make your own. Uh, you can take an old whip flag, cut it into two and a half foot pieces or so, however deep your snow is going to get. Uh, take a little reflective tape around the top and pound those in the ground and you've got a marker. You know, maybe it's a flower box, maybe it's your your wife's prized rose bush or whatever it is, you don't want to hit that and mark it so you don't have to worry about it when you get in the snow. Another thing is where are you going to pile your snow? Maybe you live in an area where the snow pretty much melts between storms or you live in an area that once it starts storming in the, in the winter time, it's going to continue until March. And if that's the case, you need to kind of plan where your snow is going to be piled. You know, if you're doing a windrow, you're going to want to make sure that your windrow starts quite a ways back so you can windrow the whole all season long and not and still have a full width driveway at the end of the season. You need to know that your local, you know, your city, you need to make sure you know your local regulations. I, you know, most cities that I know, they don't really appreciate you pushing all your snow right in the middle of the street. So have a plan, where are you gonna put it? Make sure your postman can get to your mailbox. Uh, these are all things that you really need to plan beforehand. Now we're getting to the plow section. This is the, this is the part, this is the part that we, we told our wives about that we're gonna go out there and we're gonna push some snow, keep the driveway clear. This is the actual plowing, this is the fun stuff. So it comes all down to planning. You know, what, as you've planned where you're gonna pile your snow, you probably came up with a combination of what we call windrow pushing or a straight push. You know, there'll probably be a combo of both. To get into those, so windrow, first of all, is when you have your plow blade and you have it angled. So you've got, the, you've got your machine and you've got that plow blade angled, right? And so all the snow is gonna roll off the side 
of the plow and you're going to push all the snow basically from one side of the driveway to the other side and then off the driveway. If you've got a lot of heavy snow, you might want a relief row or two. So if you think about it, you know, you've got a, a nice long push. Maybe it's a little too wide, maybe a little bit too much snow. You start pushing that snow directly sideways. By the time you get to the edge, you've, you've run three or four times, you've got four times as much snow, plus it's all compacted and heavier, sitting right on that last push that you need to push it off the driveway. So sometimes you'll do a couple of relief rows. You can, you can push next to the edge first, so that'll give you a relief area where that snow can go. Another thing too is make sure that you've pushed wide. Make sure you've pushed off the grass so that there's room as these storms stack up and you keep stacking that snow, that there's a place for it to go. And then on the wind rowing, you know, it, it'll catch you out. I, I can almost guarantee you're pushing down and you're pushing down into a pile and you've got your blade angled and you push into it and it throws your whole machine. Your machine's basically on ice, so it doesn't have a lot of traction. And you hit that pile and it'll just throw you to the side. And it, probably worse on an ATV than in a UTV, but it's still, it still, it catches you off guard because that's not what you were planning. You were planning on compressing that snow into that pile straight on and you're braced for it and all of a sudden you're, you're going sideways. So keep, keep that in mind. And then the next kind of plowing is what we call a straight push. Now straight push, you're gonna use this, maybe you've got a nice wide area, maybe you can't windrow, maybe there's not enough room to windrow. Uh, a lot of driveways, you'll normally do a couple straight pushes to make room so you can start your windrow without packing all the snow down. This is basically where the, the blade is perpendicular to the vehicle. And a straight push, you just overlap your lines a little bit. It's not like you can use the full width of your blade. The snow's gonna roll off. The snow's gonna roll off the side. Plow wings are gonna help with this quite a bit, actually. So the next part is piling. So that's actually, you know, the smaller our yards get, the smaller our driveways get, you know, piling's important, especially when you leave in an area that your snow is gonna keep accumulating all year long. So there's different ways you can do it. One of the ways that's the easiest, and if you have room, you basically just stack it. So you'll straight push into it, stop the next time you come you straight push again into it and it just keeps building up and you're you're stacking that snow straight on the ground it's not going to get very tall it's just going to stay flat as you're stacking you're coming into that pile you don't want to start lifting your blade until you start reversing because the bottom of that blade is kind of scooped under the snow and if you try to lift you're going to break your your plow rope so you need to back up before you start lifting your your blade up now that that works great but a lot of us don't have room for that and so someone showed me a couple years back it's i call it ramping and so basically you come into the pile and you start lifting your blade and it's making a pile you know you kind of go up on the pile and it takes less room and you can really get that snow kind of piled up so there you go we uh we were able to get our, our uh, fire lane plowed. We showed you how to windrow. We showed you how to straight plow. We showed you some uh, stacking techniques, the ramping technique. Um, you know, a, a couple things that it, sometimes when you're in a, a big pile and you can't push it all at once, sometimes you lift up the blade a little bit and then you can push off the top and then come back, drop the blade all the way down and do it again. And, get through some of those tough things but a lot of this is common sense you know and and like I said at the start it's all it's all different there's tons of variables um, but I had a lot of fun hopefully uh, hopefully I was showing that but uh, it's a good way to get two things done at once but anyways so this will be a fun comments type video I, I'm expecting a lot of advice uh, other tips and tricks so please subscribe leave your comments um, check out our website rockymountainatvmc.com and we'll catch you next time